Hi there. So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about the motivation and philosophy about how we design this course, the learning environment that you'll be in, uh, because I think it's important to kind of understand the rationale that we structure in a very particular way that might be different than what you're used to. And we want to talk about why that's important, why we structure in that way. I um, in the next couple of videos, I'll talk a bit about uh, technological resources as well as assessments and how that works. So this is more about the general course structure. So one of the first things I usually ask students when they think about learning is I usually ask, and this works more effectively in a real classroom where I can have people raise hands. So I usually ask people about experiences learning how to ride a bicycle. Now, no, learning how to ride a bicycle is not a prereq for this class, so it's okay if you cannot or do not know how to ride a bike. <clears throat> but I usually ask people, okay, how many learned how to ride a bike? And almost everyone in the class will raise their hand. And then I ask, okay, how many people learned how to le learned how to ride a bike by coming to a classroom three times a week and listening to Hunter talk about it? And usually like one person that's kind of joking like raises their hand, but it's definitely a joke. No one learns how to ride a bike like that because that's kind of obviously not how you learn how to ride a bike. How do you learn how to ride a bike? You have to get on the bike and ride it. And there's this very intuitive notion for that when learning how to ride bikes that we somehow lose when we think about how to learn programming. Learning programming or any skill really is the same as learning how to ride a bike. It's not as physical in the sense that you don't have to go outside and be on a physical object in order to write a program, but the skills and the processes of learning work exactly the same. So listening to me talk to you about Python programming is not actually helping you learn. It's a precursor in a sense to that you get to know what a bike is or what it's not, but knowing how to actually use it or ride it takes practice. And so we design our course around this idea of practice. So every day uh, coming to class, we're gonna ask you to do some preparation. So every day there's gonna be these lessons where you're going to actually be doing readings beforehand so that you can um, uh, learn the fundamentals, the, the basic ideas of what we're trying to talk about that day. And then in class, we get to practice them together. So in this bike analogy, the lessons are all about introducing what's a bike, what's not a bike, what are the mechanics for how a bike works. And we're going to do all that stuff at home. You're going to learn that those stuff. You're going to be introduced to that topic. Do not worry, though. By the time that you finish that reading, I am not expecting you to be a master in riding bikes. What I want you to do is I want you to come to class where we could practice together with your peers and actually build up the skills because that's the hard part of learning. And I want to do that part together rather than having you do that stuff on your own. So let me give you a highlight of kind of what your normal week is going to look like. So we have class on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And before each of those classes, I'm going to ask you to read a lesson. Um, and it's going to be introducing that day's concepts. And this for, for Wednesday's lesson, it's introducing a lot of the Python syntax for a lot of fundamental ideas like loops and if statements and so on in Python. Um, those lessons also have practice problems, but I encourage you to not do the practice problems before class because in class, we'll work on those problems together. So you should do the reading, but then stop after you finish the pause and think slide that usually asks you to um, reflect on what on what you just learned. There's a set of practice problems afterwards, and I encourage you to uh, come to class with those not yet done so we can work on those together. And that's gonna be most of our class time is gonna be a little bit of recap, as well as working on those practice problems as a class. Um, I'll talk a little bit about this more later, uh, but those lessons are gonna be due at the end of the day. So at, at midnight uh, on that day of the lesson, the, that lesson is due. That, so that gives you time after class to finish it up. They're not part of a grade. There's a small extra credit opportunity for completing the lessons on time, again, by the, the night of the day of that class. So for Wednesday's lesson, it'd be due Wednesday night. Uh, but we'll talk a little bit more about the mechanics of that later. So they're not graded, but you are expected to be doing them. And we provide a small extra credit opportunity to help in incentivize staying up with them. Um, it says this thing about a CP due. I'm going to ignore that for a second. So that's what Monday, Wednesday, Friday is going to look like. You're going to be kind of come, doing some preparation, coming to class, and practicing. So we're practicing throughout the week. On Thursdays, we have quiz sections, which are smaller TA-led uh, groups of students 
where you're going to be target doing more practice, normally targeted at synthesizing a lot of the ideas we've done across days, because usually each day is focused on a very particular topic. So the quiz sections are usually designed about synthesizing a lot of the ideas we talked about so far, and almost always are designed to help you for your next take home assessment. Okay. Now, I'll talk a little bit more about assessments later, like this exact format, what they look like, but I'll just briefly mention that there's various due dates throughout the week. The biggest one is Thursday nights is when our take home assessments are due. These are your big programming assignments, as well as a little learning reflection to think about what you've learned that week. Those are generally going to be due on Thursdays. We also are going to be having what we call a checkpoint, which is a small set of problems that we are, you're going to be required to do. Those checkpoints are generally going to be released Thursday or Friday and are due on Mondays. So your two big due dates each week for things that are actually part of your course grade are Monday nights for these checkpoints, these small set of problems, and then the take home assessments and learning reflections on Thursdays, which are much larger in scope. And the checkpoint is intended to help prepare you for that take home assessment. So that's going to be kind of what our week to week looks like. Um, I will mention in my face as covering this up a little bit, <clears throat> we don't record attendance in any of these things in lecture or in the quiz sections. We don't take attendance, but it, attending those sessions is expected. Um, there are recordings of the class sessions, the, the Monday, Wednesday sessions or Monday, Wednesday, Friday sessions, but the content itself is all introduced in the lessons. Those recordings are just kind of going over practice problems. So we really recommend coming to class if you're able, because that time of actually working with your peers is the most beneficial part, not just watching a recording. Um, so I think about how your learning works in this class is kind of building up, starting at nothing. Like you so far don't know a topic. And the lesson is a first introduction. So you've read the lesson and you now know what say a for loop looks like in Python. You've seen the syntax. But I don't expect to be able to apply that knowledge or be able to master that knowledge yet because you've just been introduced to it. You are aware it exists. So the lesson is just a first touch point. Then I, I think building off of that are these class sessions where we recap material from the readings, but most of our time is actually spent in small groups working on the practice problems for that lessons. And the emphasis here is actually riding that bike in class. You're going to be em we're emphasizing learning by doing. And again, I don't think you've mastered the course concepts yet after just finishing the practice problems, but you're on the way to that mastery. I mentioned those quiz sections are where we kind of practice those last two ideas in a context, a much smaller context where you get more one-on-one -on -one interaction with the TA. So most of the time is spent working with groups, but the emphasis here is still learning by doing. And then finally is this last step, this last point of demonstrating mastery in a topic is these assessments. So with the scaffolding from those last points, you're now capable of tackling the checkpoints and the take home assessments. And these will be complex and challenging, but in a way that helps you learn, that you're demonstrating, you know, you're applying these problems or these concepts to solve these complicated problems. And you, again, you're going to still be learning along your way for these take home assessments. And this is for each topic. You're going to be doing this multiple times throughout the quarter. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to mention that even though we're doing this thing in kind of a flipped classroom, that is that term of like you're doing most of the preparation beforehand, and we're not going to introduce a lot of new content in class. Many people think about this class being completely asynchronous, which is true in the sense that the lesson content is delivered asynchronously at your own time, at your own pace, but your peers and your TAs are not. So we're going to be kind of releasing the lessons and assessments as we move throughout the quarter rather than all at once. And even though you can just read those on your own, the really beneficial part is working with your peers. So finding a study group, finding people that you always work with in class to actually build up your working knowledge of these concepts. So a really important note is that interacting compassionately and empathetically is really important in our classroom because most of our class time is built around the concept of community. And importantly, I, as much as I would love to be able to, can't build a community in this classroom on my own. It's built by you. So we need you to actively participate in this classroom. We are doing everything we can to make our class time useful and uh, beneficial for your learning, but it also requires effort from you to actually show up, even though it might not be your, your first priority because you know we all get busy. So I do recommend taking the time to show up to quiz section to participate with your peers or show up to class as well. So what does a t participation mean? This means attending class sessions and quiz sections when you're able to, if you're not sick. Uh, participating in ed discussions that you know, the course staff are on there a lot, but you can respond or comment or add follow-up questions to the questions that are out there. They're meant to be a discussion. 
not just a Q&A. And reach out to your peers and the course staff when you need help. If you're struggling with a concept or something comes up, talk to us so that we're able to all work together. Okay, in the next uh, video, I wanna talk a little bit about specific assessments. I outlined a little bit of it here. I wanna talk more in depth about what those assessments actually will look like.